In the next video, I'll take you on a short tour of where our materials are stored. Normally, researchers don't get to go in the back areas. Like many archives, we have what are called closed stacks, which means that staff go and get materials for researchers. We do this for a couple of reasons. One, because of the uniqueness of the items, the organization is often less standardized and more creative than in the main part of the library, so it would be difficult for an average person to find things. It typically takes our student employees about a semester to get a handle on where things are. Two, if an item is particularly fragile or has special handling requirements, like needing gloves, staff can more easily inform researchers about those things. In the stacks on the east side of the building is where our rare books are kept. If you were taking this tour in person, one of the first things you would notice when entering the stacks area is a drop in temperature. Our storage areas have environmental controls designed to facilitate long-term preservation, like cooler temperatures and humidity controls. They are also in place in the reading room, but they are more distinct in the stacks. There is also a lack of windows in the stacks, and we turn off the lights when they are not in use because exposure to light can cause materials to fade over time. This is also why we ask people to turn off the flash on their camera before taking photos of documents. As I mentioned before, most of our materials have a stronger tie to the area. This is what is of most interest to our users and what is most readily around for us to collect. This topic is also something that other archives around the world are not collecting. Basically, if the archives in this area don't save and preserve its history, who will? So in this vein, we have many regional and Wisconsin history books. Some of them are secondary sources, while others are primary sources. There are general books on Wisconsin and lacrosse history. There are also publications that focus on particular businesses, churches, organizations, people, and places. We also have published reports and newsletters from various government agencies, businesses, and groups. We also have vertical files on various local topics, people, businesses, organizations, and places. Some archives call these clipping files because they generally contain a lot of newspaper and magazine article clippings, but they could also contain pamphlets and artifacts that for practical purposes are too small to catalog and give a call number to like a typical book. Vertical files on some subjects may contain a lot of materials, while others might only contain one thing. Hopefully looking at these often irreplaceable resources helps make it clear why we don't allow pens. It would be a real tragedy to have a pen's ink explode or get smeared on something. We prefer pencils because they don't leak and marks from unintentional contact can typically be erased. Some of the more unexpected materials in our holdings include little magazine publications, early science fiction, Midwest contemporary poetry, and artists in fine press books. While looking at our books, you might have noticed the little bookmarks sticking out of them. These acid-free paper streamers are what we put the book's call number on because we don't want to place stickers on them. We also have large items like these maps. Some have been encapsulated in plastic to protect them. They are stored in these big map cabinet drawers. There are also older books and materials that were transferred here from the main part of the library collection as they now have more historic significance like these life magazines. Don't let the red hardcovers fool you. These are the same as the typical Life magazine issues that you have probably seen before. Sometimes libraries get things like this bound together in order to protect them from getting torn, keep them in order by date, and make them easier to shelve and move. Perhaps the thing we are best known for in the community are our photograph collections. They contain both historic and contemporary images of UWL and the La Crosse area, as well as smaller amounts of photos of various cities in Wisconsin, the U.S., and the world. There are also postcards and stereo views in the collection. For some places and subjects, we have a lot of photos. For others, we have just a few. And for some, we have none. The archive is very dependent on donations. So if no one donated anything on a given subject matter, we might not have anything. When handling the photographs, we ask that researchers wear cotton gloves to protect them from fingerprints and deterioration caused by the oils found on everyone's hands. Now that we have covered the materials stored on the east side of the building, let's continue our tour in the stacks on the west side. Over here, we will see archival manuscript collections, county level government records, and materials related to UWL. We have a multitude of items connected to the university, 
such as copies of the Racket student newspapers, yearbooks, meeting minutes for some committees, photographs, university reports, newsletters, class catalogs, alumni magazines, and other publications, and vertical files on general topics, people, organizations, and buildings. We also have most of the UWL student theses from over the years, as well as a selection of UWL student papers from a handful of classes, like the History and Archaeology capstone courses. Sometimes special collections and archives have a specialty collection area. Ours is photographs of inland river steamboats. This collecting area ties to La Crosse because it was and still is a popular port on the Mississippi River for steamboats. With over 30,000 images, we think we have one of the largest collections of steamboat photographs in the world. People from places far and wide contact us about it. This collection came into being because volunteer Ralph Dupe and librarian Ed Hill made a concerted effort to identify and gather these images for many, many years. To support our steamboat photograph collection, we also collect publications about steamboats. Additionally, our archive serves as the public repository for interviews conducted by the UWL Oral History Program. Founded in 1968, there are hours upon hours of OHP recordings and transcripts covering topics local to national. Some popular interviews focus on UWL experiences, the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League, Lacrosse and Mississippi River history, and Hmong immigrants talking about experiences in the Vietnam War and relocating to the Midwest. While working in archives, you might encounter dated forms of technology. For example, many of the oral histories were originally recorded on reel-to-reel -reel tape, and the collection of lacrosse newspapers that we have, which dates back to the 1850s and 60s, is preserved on microfilm.